Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters in Islam. May Allah guide my talk and may be beneficial to you all and reach your hearts and minds with kindness and openness, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother, for your introduction. And um, I love what you have said about us being more concerned about our education and our children and being more involved in the community. And one of the pillars that we talk about in, in homeschooling and home educating is such that community is a very important part of home educating our children. Firstly, I would like to graciously thank Brother Jawed and the Zero Education Group for inviting the Toronto Muslim homeschoolers and allowing homeschooling community to be part of this gathering and recognizing that homeschooling is an alternative education. We hope to inform those who are curious about home education and sees it to be a viable option in enriching their children's lives and their educational journey. I would like to first outline the program itinerary. These are the topics that we will be exploring the next 15, 20 minutes, inshallah, and I hope it will be beneficial and it will be enlightening you on the tapestries and the simplicities of home education and how you can start being proactive in taking on this beautiful journey at home with your children. I will be discussing specifically the foundations of home education in the primary grades, which are junior kindergarten to grade eight. Lastly, how we can find home educating support in your area and find like-minded families in your communities. <laughs> okay, next one, Ms. Hello. So I would like to first introduce myself. My name is Ajala Prakani, and I've been blessed to be a parent educator of three children. My parents, like many of you, were immigrants here to find a new life, regardless of how comfortable our lifestyle was back home, to find a better life here in Canada. I grew up in the Canadian educational system, and I came from a family of business entrepreneurs, finance and medical professionals, and taking this path of education for my family has been an eye-opener. Because, mashallah, they've seen the changes in the educational system. And, alhamdulillah, We've taken on this journey for the past few years, and a lot of them have been also keenly interested in what ed home education looks like. Alhamdulillah, I'm privileged to be the chair of women of Toronto Muslim Homeschoolers, which is a nonprofit organization established almost 17 years ago. So that's been a very long time now. And it's by a group of mothers sharing the same vision for their children and their families. But I am here to share information about this alternative approach to educating our children. However, I, what I'm not here for is to persuade you. I'm not here to tell you that one option is better than the other. And as the brother has said earlier, we need different options so we can have a solution. So I'm here to simply let you know that this option of home education exists. And it works for millions of families around the world and for the past generations. <laughs> and also to know, home educating is a privilege and we want to be cognizant and, the respectful, and be respectful of every parent's choice in whichever way they choose to educate their child. So I want to quickly, briefly ask the audience, because I know we're running behind time, when you hear your uh, home edu uh, homeschooling, what do you think of? Anyone? Yes. Internet. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Go ahead, sister. Sorry. Responsibility. Very good. And oh, sorry, brother. Go ahead. Sorry. 
involvement. MashaAllah, you are all very intellectual individual groups because usually we hear schooling in a building or just in a home. So MashaAllah, thank you for those deep, insightful uh, feedback. And one of the other goals uh, I want to ask is, what are your goals for your children? And how do you define success for your children? I think we're gonna have a broad, yeah, go ahead. So the sister said, actually learning the material and not just getting the grade. That's that's really good. I'll to be touching a little bit upon this. Oh, go ahead, brother. Please go ahead. Confidence, mashallah. Very good. Go ahead, sister. I think I just want my kids to be God conscious. Be God conscious. She said her she wants her children to be God conscious. Good. Go ahead. Being a leader for the ummah. Mashallah. Being a leader for the Ummah, and that's one of the goals that we all do uh, want for our children is making sure that we bring up non conscious children and that they their journey here in the dunya puts them towards the Akhira, right? Easily, inshallah. So, to get you, you've answered most of our question, and that's amazing because just to get you in the framework of a lot of how home educating families think. Is that as we know, our Islamic teachings teaches us we strive for good to worship Allah, right, and be conscious of that. And every action we do, we should do it towards the pleasure of Allah, inshallah. So now we think about what our dunya goals are and what our akhira goals are. And as we kind of ponder about those questions, let's open our minds and hearts in the next few minutes and how we can successfully educate our children in doing that. So, so we are all the same uh, definition. Home educating has been around for thousands of years. We, we understand that. And that was the primary way parents actually educated their child. And so here, we would like to define homeschooling. Because homeschooling, we also talk about, we also use the term home education. And it's the own, it's the education of their own children, our own children, by parents or guardian, that is outside the traditional school institution. And the reason why I say traditional school buildings, per se, is because homeschooling is not just a school. However, several families who actually educate their children do so in various environments, whether it's in libraries, in massages, in labs, traveling around the world, or in the comfort of your homes. And the list really goes on. And there are various reasons why home education, family, and home education is chosen by families. And one of the common reasons is that it's, our, it's in religious and Islamic teachings. As we talk about this in a lot of our homeschooling circles, we Muslims believe that our children are our amina. That simply means that our child is a trust that has been given to us, has been endowed on each parent to take care of, to their fullest ability, that one day on the day of judgment, we will return to Allah and we will, we will be questioned, how do, we take, how do we take care of our children, right? And Alhamdulillah, I think this is why you're all here, to find different options for your child. And, and to furthermore, yeah, and to furthermore extend the definition of our home education is that we take ownership in our children's education in responsibility of teaching them in good morals and behavior, which inshallah, inshallah, helps build their strong Islamic identity. So I, I understand that at several points in your lives, we've all taught our children Islamic values, read books to them, did some mathematics with them, brought them to trips, showed them different experiences. This is part of our homeschool, home educating, and it's part of a lifestyle, actually. And it's a beautiful journey as we go along. And we want our children to be thriving and thriving in that journey and be independent thinkers while we also have a strong Islamic identity. So how do we do this? One of the most frequently asked questions is that, is it legal in Ontario? 
to remove our children from public or private schools so we can shape their Islamic identity. And now, mashallah, a lot of the speakers before me has talked about different variations of teaching our children outside that public institution or private institution. And the answer is, yes, it is. In 2002, a policy was passed by the Ministry of Education to treat homeschooling families under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that parents have a prior right to choose kind, the kind of education that shall be given to their children. And parents, alhamdulillah, have the privilege to homeschool freely without the interference from school boards, Ministry of Education, and child protection agencies. And here you can also see that there is an education act that seats that as well. And here, uh, I've already gone through this, so I'm just going to go through the slide a little bit quicker. And for those who you don't know about um, your children, for who, like for instance, if they're in kindergarten, the compulsory age of educating your child is actually six years old. So if you have a child that's below six years old, you can find other forms of education for your child, and you don't have to register them in a government academic institution. And just to further that, uh, to strengthen that further, there is, an, uh, there is a provincial homeschooling support and advocacy group that was established in 1987. And they are called the Ontario Federation of Teacher Parents, OFTP, and they provide information about home learning. They enable networking among home educating members from different faiths, not just Muslim um, community, uh, Muslim families, and they serve as an advocacy group and link between the homeschooling community and the provincial government. So with all this information, how do parents get started with this journey? First, and ultimate step is understanding why do you want to do why do you want to go in this path of alternate education what is your main objective or focus of home educating your child why do you think this is the best way to educate them and the next is your vision why do you want your children to achieve and do with their lives while they while they enter Jannah inshallah what is your overall vision for their education, educational and career vision, and how do you execute that vision? And as Muslims, we all know we are rewarded for our intentions, and we need to really dig deep into our hearts and our intentions. Why are we doing this as parents? What are your priorities in your life? Is it your career, your parenting, um, community projects, Islam? And the other thing is, how do you want to take care of the amana, that trust that Allah SWT has given provided you with? And by understanding these questions in you, you it will help guide you to create that vision for your family and for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna let you touch up on this because I know we're running a little bit behind time. So one of the things that we look into when we're um, considering home educating is creating the type of vision you want in your family, the personal your personal values, your parenting values, and your family culture. Because we all know that homeschooling is not just the mom or the dad teaching, sitting down and taking a notebook and teaching your child or, or, or wherever. It's a lifestyle that you do every day and it becomes your core memory, inshallah. And this is where the morals and the character, the Islamic teachings come in. And we talk about Islamic uh, educational philosophies. What what kind of what kind of type of education do you want to take on with your with your children? Okay. Okay, and then now we in our group actually we have a pamphlet. For those parents who are wondering, okay, we, we want we want to homeschool, but how do we do that? Like, how do I know my child is this learning this, 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 and are on par with their grade level with their other students in society? So, alhamdulillah, 
the, the Ontario government has actually outlined learning expectations in each grade level and each subject. So we have a checklist that helps you do that. And um, one of the things, the one of the primary things that we look into is that the three R's. The three R's would be the arithmetic, writing, reading, and then afterwards you can add in all the subjects that you'd like. For instance, Islamic studies, for N, is your, if, if are you focusing on your hymns, your children's hymns and Islamic studies. And going into the curriculum, you see this, this is a part of the expectations and ensuring that, okay, did my child reach this? If, again, this is just a guideline. The beautiful thing about homeschooling is its flexibility. In choosing your own subjects, and that something that your child enjoys, or things that you think your child would need, and you are basically the, your child's primary educator. And when we go into this, we can actually learn about our child and connect with our child, because we can go with the pace of the child, because at times, the child is more advanced and they just understand that subject. And there are times that Maybe they won't understand that subject. So you can go slower if you'd like, so that you can master that topic with them. And in school or in different classroom settings, because there's many students, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit tough because we have to go to the pace of the classroom. So if there's a child that doesn't understand it, okay, unfortunately we have to move on. And that is the flexibility of homeschooling. This is just a few of um, curriculums. There's actually a plethora of curriculums out there that a lot of teachers use. However, if you dig that deep into the curriculum world, mashallah, there are so many different curriculums out there now that will enhance your child's education depending on your ch child's learning style and learning capabilities. And I'm not gonna go into this uh, because there's a lot, but there is a, website, uh, her name is Kathy Duffy, and she actually goes into comparisons and reviews all these different uh, curriculums that you would like to dive on. Um, and she, she, she goes through the different textbooks, topics, table, table of contents, etc. And one of the other things that I wanted to touch on with in regards to curriculums is that there are a lot of uh, a lot of bookstores that carry curriculums that are necessarily not in your not used in public schools or private schools. There's Learning House, Bird, uh, Partner uh, bookstores where you can physically see the the different curriculums that are available for uh, for the public. And one of the other things is if you feel like you don't know a topic well enough or you're not confident enough to teach it, there, there are ways to teach your child. There are outsourcing um, companies like Kumon, we all know about Kumon, uh, Prep for Nine, Al School, the Khan, Khan Academy, and also Islamic schools that can help you through that journey. And another example of support and different homeschooling courses there are many homeschooling uh, courses that parents can learn about, and they basically guide you a little bit more specifically on how to begin your homeschooling journey. And there's uh, there are these courses here, and also one of our founders actually has a homeschooling uh, guidance, a support system for moms and families to help them through that first stages of homeschooling. So once you've made the, your du'as and the isfakara and you know that you'll be educating your child and hope to educate your child, the next thing is you, and if your, your child is not registered publicly uh, or a private institution or a uh, public institution, you will then need to, you do not need to create this uh, letter of intent or withdrawal. It's only if your child has been registered into uh, a public school or a Catholic school or a private school, just to let them know that the details that your parent, that your child is excused in attending that school. And you're just providing that to the principal or the school board, depending on your school's preference. 
And to know if homeschooling doesn't work for you, you can always bring them back to the public school just in case that it's not a one time life. A lot of homeschoolers, new homeschoolers that we speak to, it's like, okay, we pulled them out. Okay, now what do we do? Is this forever? It's not. You know, if it's you made your intentions, you made your duas, and if it's not working for you, there is Islamic schools, there's public schools, and the price that you can still put them through. And it's just that making that dua, that intention that you tried. Okay, um, so the other thing is finding your support. Once you've decided to go to school, finding your support system is advisable to, um, to join a mother support group uh, where you can join a community of like-minded families and do activities with them. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization called the Toronto of Homeschoolers, and we've grown to four families back in the 2006. Now we have about over 400 families. So within that, I would like to talk to you a little bit about what we do. And it's a little bit small, but essentially our the organization stands for um, be inspired and in following our Islamic traditions and acquiring knowledge through exchanging ideas and resources to nurture and elevate a child to succeed in this life and the hereafter. And our main goal is to really cultivate open-minded, critical thinkers to inspire and serve society through the teachings of the Sunnah and Islamic values. While being given the opportunity to discover and excel in their God-given talents, the child's individuality. While instilling a love of learning, because we need that, right? That's what sparks our, our enjoyment in learning. I know it's a mouthful, so a lot of goals and ideas, and uh, that this is just our more, uh, more than star, or guide, sorry, so to speak. And these are just a few examples of the activities that we do. We have field trips, we have study, science fairs, and these are all put together by families, home, gen home educators um, coming together to educate their children. And we have a graduation as well. And we have fathers joining too and that um, are very keen to join in and do sports, lead sports, and et cetera. And if you are interested in learning about more about, more about homeschooling, excuse me, we will be having an event in September, which I highly invite you to. We will be going in depth more on different educational philosophies and see different curriculum books that many families have used. And we are also having a panel of home educators sharing and discussing their experiences of home educating their children from kindergarten to university. So, mashallah, there's a lot of wealth of wisdom that will be shared, inshallah, on, during that event. And you can connect with us. Uh, if sisters, if you, we have a booth, and there's actually more information there that you can get the registration, uh, registration website. You can also connect with us through our website and our Instagram. That is one of the ways we, uh, we connect with other home educate who are interested or curious about home educating and also families who are, have already been educated and want the support and want to find like-minded families within this journey. So, Zakla care for being patient and open your minds to this way of educating our children. As I close off this presentation, I would like to leave you with this thought. How do you want your children to remember you? And what is your vision for your child? What is that journey in this dunya, the world, that will help them cross the bridge to Jannah easily because you've prepared them in this dunya by taking the steps of their education and their lifestyle? May Allah reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give in the decisions we make in parenting, our decision, and bring us the environment that will help continuously walk them in the path of Islam so that they can be successful in this world and the hereafter, I mean. So that's how I know.